Life is hard. That's just something that's just a fact of life. Jesus says, in this world, you will have troubles, but take heart, I have overcome the world. In this world, you will have troubles. I get very frustrated when I hear the prosperity gospel in various forms being preached, giving people this idea that somehow when they become a Christian, their lives are going to improve infinitely externally. And while that is true in some ways, and I think in some cases, yes, living the way God has called us to live and walking with Christ is going to give us abundance in the spiritual sense. And sometimes in the physical sense, I believe God does want abundance for us and that there is nothing wrong with abundance. But prosperity in terms of um, being problem-free is a lie straight from the pit. Because if you believe that God wants you to live an easy life, free from any kind of trials or, or temptations or frustrations, and then you encounter those trials, you're going to wonder what you're doing wrong. And I just think of, you know, there have been missionaries that have starved to death, that have died on the mission field, that have been beheaded. Um, there have been Christians that have gone through bankruptcy. There have been Christians that have been homeless. Um, there are trials in this world. And, you know, uh, the Bible does not promise freedom from suffering. In fact, it says that when you live a life you will reflect uh, the sufferings of Christ and that that should be something to be rejoiced about. You know, that you delight in, in suffering for the sake of Jesus. And Paul talks about that. And the disciples, most of the disciples, um, according to biblical accounts and church history, died martyr deaths that were not pleasant. And it's a fact. So... We need to acknowledge that our children are going to face trials. And I hate this. I hate it with everything that is in me because I know that I have nothing, uh, that I can't protect them from everything. I want to say, I'll never let anything happen to you, but that's ridiculous because stuff's going to happen. But what we can pray is, you know, I think of Jesus praying for his disciples. He said, God, not that you would take them out of the world, but that you would protect them from the evil one. We can pray not that God would remove the trials from their lives. We can pray that. I mean, you're free to pray that. And I do pray that sometimes. I admit freely that I do pray against trials for my kids sometimes. But what we can pray and know for sure that God is going to just work in amazing ways is for perseverance when they face trials, because that's a guarantee. God promises that his power is made perfect in weakness. Um, he promises that the Holy Spirit will give us boldness, um, that we will be strengthened when we are weak, that he will um, be close to the brokenhearted. So these are all things that we can claim as promises and know for sure that God is unleashing amazing power. If I pray, God, please deliver my son from suffering in some way, I'm not guaranteed that that is not part of a plan for his life or that God will pluck him out of that situation. But if I pray, God, give him strength, give him perseverance. Um, I believe that that is something that is infinitely more powerful. And in the long run, I can look back on, on one of my children's sufferings and see how God used those to make him so strong and just so much more um, trusting in God. It strengthened his faith. It strengthened his faith in himself and it strengthened his faith in God. And it gave him life lessons that he'll never, no one can ever take from him. And I look back and I think, if I had known then what I know now, I wouldn't have prayed against those things. I'd just be praying more for strength for him because I wouldn't trade those lessons for the pain that he experienced. And it's hard to say that. And it's hard to know that when you're in the thick of things and you don't see the fruit at the end of it. Um, but even now looking back, it's hard to even say that. Yes, I, I'm glad my kid had to, had to struggle because um, I don't like it. But I think today with that perspective, take yourself out of the suffering that you see their child in or that they might 
fate face in the future and try to put yourself on the end of it like where i am with with some of the struggles my son encountered and try to put yourself on the other end and see god is sovereign there is nothing that my child will go through that god isn't going to use for their ultimate good as hard as it is to acknowledge or see cuz some of our kids some of your kids are going through things or have gone through things that are unspeakable not like the things i'm talking about with my kid which were small in comparison so i don't want to minimize the word trial in any way because there's some really bad stuff out there that could end in death or worse um long 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 term damage um but what we need to remember is god is the source of strength his power is made perfect in weakness and james 1 2 through 4 says consider it pure joy my brothers and sisters when you face trials of many kinds because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything and what i have to stand on no matter how my human mind can't understand it is that somehow god may not cause the suffering or the trial this world is fallen and sinful and ugly and horrible at times but that god could use god is always at work and that he can and will use any ugliness that the world throws at our kids to allow them to gain perseverance and to be mature and complete not lacking anything which tells me that there's something they would have been lacking without that trial and that's powerful so let's look to the completion to the not at the lack at the provision that god is providing the blessing that god is growing out of that manure pile of suffering that this world throws at our kids god is growing a garden out of that manure pile um and it's a garden that will produce fruit in our children and fruit in in the world for his kingdom so with that perspective let's pray father we confess i confess that many times i don't want anything to do with suffering when it comes to my kids i want them to live happy easy carefree lives but that's not your will for them in all cases and it's not their best as hard as that is to acknowledge god it is not their best to live easy challenge free lives and we are promised trouble in this world so we acknowledge right now god this world stinks sometimes it stinks like manure <laughs> and we hate the idea that our children are going to experience trials we just lay it all out there before you god we hate it but if that is the case and if we will have trouble and if our kids will have trouble we need to shift our thinking and we need to know that you are bigger than trouble you are bigger than trials and we acknowledge you as jehovah jireh the almighty god who provides from the abundance of your riches and glory you provide every single one of the needs of our children and more than that a step deeper in james 1 2 through 4 if we if our children allow perseverance to finish its work in them they will be mature and complete not lacking anything that there might be something that would be lacking in their lives an element of maturity that would be missing were it not for that trial because of your redeeming sovereign hand that can take a manure pile and grow a garden and bear fruit from it god thank you you are redeemer you are the author of good you are the master gardener you are the lord of our kids and you are the king over trials and trouble you are the conqueror you are victorious and we pray that victory would be manifest in our children's lives that they would persevere god and let perseverance finish it, its work that they would not shrink in the face of trials god but they would be bold and they would walk forward with power 
with defiance against the enemy and the world. And that they would see your hand, God, that in the midst of their trials, they would see your mighty hand at work, that they would acknowledge your love, that they would never be deceived into thinking that you would withhold any good gift, that they would run to you in the time of trouble and not away from you, God. We pray that over them, God, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.